Hey guys, back with another one. Um, today I'm going to do something a little bit different than what I usually do. Um, until now we've been covering a lot of hair tutorials. Uh, but this time I want to show you something completely different, something, uh, something I've been working on for a little while. Um, on the screen you probably, you can see that um, I have an Unreal project open. And um, this is kind of like a block out project, uh, a block out of a project I'm working on, a um, uh, sort of a short film type deal. Um, and I've been working on a few things which I want to sort of um, explain to you now. You can see um, there's a little cup over here, okay? And um, this cup is an asset, and all of these block outs. They're going to be in assets, you know, this um, sort of this, uh, what do you call this thing, this uh, blinds, um, these pillars, these wall thingies, the tables, the chairs, um, all these are going to be 3D assets. And there's a lot of ways that you guys can get access to 3D assets. Um, and uh, what one, one common way, very easy, is either you can go to some platform like Sketchfab or some paid platform like Kitbash 3D or the marketplace or whatever and you can either buy um, an asset or asset pack that already exists or you can find some free ones which allow you to use it uh, depending on their licensing terms you know there's a lot of different um, restrictions when it comes to free stuff um, not everything can be used for every purpose, so you got to be a bit careful about that. But um, you, you probably can definitely find something, okay? And obviously, the paid stuff will be much better quality. But you know, um, that's one way. Uh, another way, if you find that you're not getting the assets that you need to create your vision, of your film, uh, another way is either you can create it yourself. Um, and you can just model it in software like Blender or Maya or 3ds Max or whatever software you want or even inside of Unreal has modeling tools uh, not the best well, admittedly but um, it's it's something and you can model it yourself or you can hire somebody who's good at modeling to model it for you okay and create the assets but obviously when you decide to make assets yourself one by one if you're going to create for example this cup and this table and this chair and all the different things uh, that can be tedious that can get real tedious because modeling is a very very time consuming process and it can really take time to complete a lot so if you have a scene like this where I have a, um, not only do I have to complete like this interior but I also have this exterior with some buildings parking lots and roads and a whole bunch of things that need to get done you know so um, it's gonna take a long time if you're gonna try to model everything from scratch so now I want to talk to you about the third option available to you which admittedly is not the easiest it it to be honest I find I still struggle with it very much but uh, the more I do it the easier it gets and that is okay to approach modeling in a, a procedural way okay and um, um, this can be done uh, there are different softwares you can use uh, even blenders new geometry nodes can definitely help with this if you want a free option um, but an option that I've been exploring recently is well not recently I've been exploring since the beginning of this year is Houdini okay and Houdini has some interesting tools that integrate really well with Unreal, which allow us to um, create fantastic results depending on how good you can get at using it. And if you just go online, you'll probably find out that Houdini is like the uh, the industry standard application to create special effects in movies. If you've ever seen any crazy special effects in a Marvel movie or any other movie you can think of, Star Wars, whatever, all of that. I can guarantee to you was created in Houdini because it is probably one of the most powerful softwares out there and a lot of people don't know that Houdini a lot of people think that Houdini is all about special effects and definitely that's a big part of it 
but a lot of people don't know that. You can also use it to model stuff, but the way Houdini models is completely different than other software. It's it's a procedural technique, you know, and to show you a little bit of why I brought this up. Houdini has a tool called Houdini Engine. You can even see here at the top of my menu, which is a plugin for Unreal, which allows you to, um, you know, create an asset in Houdini. Houdini has these special assets called HDAs or Houdini Digital Assets, which is basically a sort of packaged uh, procedural asset and allows you to connect it up with um, uh, Unreal and Unity and a bunch of other applications. But really, I'm using Unreal, so now I'm going to talk about that. So if I click this cup, you, you, you should know that this is a completely procedurally created cup okay um, I created this cup inside Unreal very easily using a couple of simple uh, parameters here so when I click the cup you can see here that the details panel has a special asset it's a HDA Houdini HDA inside of Unreal um, and there's a bunch of different sort of settings which we don't need to know about for now all you really need to know about is Let's just kind of reduce all this complexity and kind of look at only this Houdini parameters and Houdini inputs. Okay, that's all we really need to know about. Now, this cup settings, materials, and handle parameters, these are settings that I created in order to make a cup generator. Okay, uh, like this. It doesn't just make cups, you can make a lot of stuff, but let's, let's just focus on this cup for now. Okay, and I can adjust things like right now, real time. Okay. I can adjust like things like the height of this cup just by pressing 0.5 here okay it's cooking and boom the cup is now super tall uh, which looks really stupid so let's just bring it back down okay I can change the radius of the cup you know I can make it much wider you know like five times as wide through the seconds cooking so um, it takes a little time because I'm not the best at this. I, I kind of winged it. Um, I'll show you how it works in Houdini as well in a bit. But I just want to show you how things work now. Whoa, what do we have here? That's pretty cool. That's like a gigantic basin. But what's this? Why, why, why is our handle in the middle of nowhere? Let's just disable it. Okay, boom. Handle disabled. Um, you can control the shape of this pot thingy by just dragging pointers here and there. Uh, you can add more points and really sort of um, control the shape you know you can create like a whole lot of things here okay you can let me just undo all that not too happy with uh, those changes you can so an, another feature that I have Enable this smoothing feature, a couple of different things that smooth the object out. We can control smoothing controls. We can assign some materials to this. Um, we can enable the handle again if we wanted the handle. Um, another feature that I've uh, created for this is the lid. We can enable the lid as well. Let me just enable it's cooking. It's just taking a little time because I'm recording, I think, and Houdini's open and Unreal is open, and it's just taking a little while. Normally, it doesn't take this long. Um, let me just enable the lid as well. Yeah. And uh, I'll probably disable the handle because I think the handle is what's uh, driving the uh, performance cost here. Because I'm recording at the same time, it's like struggling a bit. So we have a little lid here, but the lid's way too tiny for this. That's okay, because as soon as I enable the lid, I get lid parameters, which I can control. And let's make the lid super large, you know, 10 times as big. Um, and then we could probably reduce the, uh, the lid overall scale. That's a bit too much, I think. Let's bring it uh, back down to one. Okay, and then maybe the this end cap scale to flatten it out, and uh, the roundness to, to to reduce the roundness of it. 
just keep it there so we can get a different shape you know and uh, there are some advanced settings which allow you to adjust some small advanced settings not important um, the thickness of the layer the thickness of the part all of these parameters I've created in Houdini that allow me to create customizable assets so let me just show you on this side I've created a couple of procedural assets now here we go we have here a cup awesome cup just a simple cup and you can see it looks good it looks fine I've created this kind of ketchup bottle type thingy and that looks all right uh, created this coca-cola type bottle thingy uh, which looks kind of cool and I've created this wild thing which is like this big Greek or uh, I don't know little antique pot thingy um, and all of this I created inside of Unreal just using this these settings and once you get the hang of it because I created these settings for me to use okay and uh, it's just inside unreal i can just create it so imagine you're creating your short film and you're like hmm this guy needs a little cup okay so let's just delete this and we'll, we'll add it in okay i'll show you how it's, i'll show you how it's done okay so we're like okay he needs a, he needs a plate okay he needs he needs a plate he's hungry okay so let's give him something to eat all right where's my pot oh sorry okay um, and I think uh, the way it works is that Houdini is running in the background uh, background and um, that's that's how it's working here okay so now remember we want a plate we don't want this big bottle thingy we want a plate so let's go to the parameters which is down here which I've created and uh, I'm gonna delete all this stuff and just sort of reset this so it's just a sort of cup thingy. Plates are typically shorter. Okay, so let's just make this a lot shorter. Okay, great. Um, let's see what this side controls. Uh, I think we need to change this to linear. Okay, so that side controls the top. That's so I want this to be one. Okay, so this side controls the uh, top. Okay. Um, and ba basically what what this setting does is uh, from bottom to top bottom to top left to right uh, the position determines where along this point it is so first thing I want to do is I want to make the uh, the first point much smaller because the plate not, not so small maybe 0 0.3 okay because the plate rests even 0 0.5 maybe a plate kind of rests on the ground like this that's great so then I can add a key by right clicking and adding a key or, or, or I could do this I could just press the plus button and it'll add a point before perfect I'm gonna change this to B spline you have different um, interpolation modes and depending on which one it is the the shape of this curve will differ B spline is kind of a very soft turn which is what I want and I'm gonna make this position 0 0.9 okay and um, well 0. Point I don't know, five, and uh, maybe not B spine, maybe this Catmull clock, and this one will change it to Catmull clock as well. There we go. And uh, what I want to do is I want to kind of bring this back a bit, so maybe zero point three. Okay, cool. Um, and then what I want to do is um, maybe change this Catmull clock. We'll see what we get kind of a soup bowl kind of thing going on here okay now it looks cool but it's a bit jaggedy and I don't like that so one, one option I have enabled here is the smooth shape we smooth it out and it reduces the jaggedness but it's still a little bit jaggedy one two three so for that we can just increase the segment count to like 24 and I'll smooth it out a bit we can increase it further to like 32 and that should smooth it out even further um, and that looks good cool 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 um, now I don't like this material it's just white it doesn't look good um, I want uh, a different material so maybe we can go to my custom materials and here I have 
um, let's call this I'm just gonna copy this because it's um, all part of this generic parent material that I created um, let's call this uh, uh, bold okay and then I'm just going to you can see here under materials we have two types of materials the base and the lid I'm just gonna put this under the base and immediately it changes to greenish okay I'm gonna open the materials and I have made some procedural materials here we can make it literally metal but I don't want that um, we can remove this noise so I put, put in some noise so that you can see just a little uh, let's exaggerate this noise a bit you can see that it looks a little noisy from the um, reflectiveness this kind of sells it a little bit just um, sort of like this I'm pro like this sort of uh, what's the word for this there's like patches or whatever stains and you can just increase the noise amount and then just kind of you know scale the noise a bit and kind of make it more patchy so it doesn't look so smooth um, and that was it you know uh, maybe I, I don't like this color maybe I want to change it to a pink bowl or orange bowl uh, lighter or uh, yeah this is pretty cool okay um, when I save it and that's it and very quickly we have a really simple sort of asset creator and, and it's not perfect you know uh, because this is my first version of this asset so there are still things that I want to improve in this but um, guys so that's how I created this um, HDA Houdini HDA but um, in the next video I want to show you how I actually did it in Houdini so I'll just show you my Houdini node tree and all that um, I've actually already re edit, um, recorded this video but it's gonna it, it took so long I feel like it'd be too long a video so I'm splitting it into two and I will release that second part uh, in the next video very soon okay so until then stay tuned and I'll catch you in the next one